previously on Heart Blocks. Oh my God, Tommy! Yes. But I thought you were dead. I went into cardiogenic shock after the accident. I was in a coma for three weeks. We can be together now. Don't you see? I defied death just for you. No, I can't. You were gone. I, I thought you were dead. Tommy, it's your brother. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Lisa? Tommy? Hi, I'm Mark from ACLS Certification Institute. And in today's video series, we're gonna talk about interpreting and recognizing heart blocks on your ECG tracing. First, let's take a look at a regular uh, cardiac complex. Starting with the P wave. P wave should be rounded and upright, and a P wave denotes atrial depolarization, or atrial contraction. Next, it returns to the isoelectric line, flat line, and that's the area where the conduction has gone through the atrium and now it's at the AV node. And the AV node is going to pause the conduction for just a moment, allow for atrial contraction before it sends it on through the ventricles, before it lets that impulse go on. Now, when we're talking about heart blocks, we're talking about the relationship between the P waves and the QRS, the relationship between the atrial chambers and the ventricular chambers and blocks are a delay in conduction at the AV node. So, first, what's a normal PRI? What's a normal PQRS interval? A normal PRI is between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. If the PRI or the PR interval is longer than that, then we could call that a first degree heart block. This is the sound of trouble, the kind that caresses lives even as it steals them away. It delicately unravels the fabric of entire towns like Corinth, Pennsylvania. When the trouble comes, it'll sound like this. And loving will never be the same again. Heart blocks are kind of like relationships. If you took a man and a woman, and you look at the atrium and the ventricles, there's a relationship there. In the heart, we have a relationship between the atrial chambers and the ventricular chambers. And in real life, we have relationships between men and women. So if we look at the relationship in a first degree heart block, this is a couple that's together. The man and woman are together. They're always together, but they're slightly separated a little bit. Almost like at the beginning of a relationship, when you may not be actually completely honest with them. You know? What do you do for a living? I'm an astronaut. So they're together, but there's still that little separation. And that's really all a first degree heart block is. Take a look at it, it almost looks like a normal sinus rhythm. A first degree heart block only means that the PRI is longer than 0.20 seconds. You'll have a P wave before each QRS, a QRS after each P wave, it looks like a normal sinus rhythm, except the PRI is longer than 0.20 seconds. That's a first degree heart block. Usually they're benign, patients asymptomatic. We just want to keep a watch on it because there is some conduction delay at the AV node. Could be a precursor to something else down the road. But generally, first degree heart blocks, no big deal. Let's get into second degree heart blocks. There's two types of second degree heart blocks. Type 1 and the type 2. Let's look at second degree heart block type 1. Just one more kiss. This is a couple that's arguing all the time. They're arguing. Second degree type one winky buck, they're arguing. They get a little further apart in the relationship. They argue some more, they get a little further apart in the relationship. They're arguing some more, they get a little further in the relationship. Finally they go, forget it, I'm out of here. And they break up and they leave. And the QRS drops, one of them leaves. And later on that night they're at a bar, same bar they always go to. They see each other, he gives her a little wink. They get back together again. 
was the wink that brought him back. The wink back. The winky back. Second degree type one. They argue, they get further apart. They argue, they get further apart. They argue, they get further apart. Finally, he leaves. He's had enough. A wink ensues. They come back together again. Second degree type one winky bar. Again, we're looking at the relationship between the P wave and the QRS. So you'll have a PRI interval. The next PRI is going to be a little longer. The next PRI will be a little longer. And in the next one, you'll have a P wave, but no QRS. The QRS drops off. Then it starts over again. PRI will be short. The next PRI will be longer. Next one will be longer until the QRS gets dropped. That's a second degree type one winky bock. Can I rescue me from you? Second degree type two, the relationship there. Here's a couple that when they're together, they're together. But he keeps going out on her. He being the ventricles. So when they're together, there's a relationship, a regular relationship. He keeps going out on her. He keeps leaving. When they're together, they're together. Normal P, normal QRS. But he keeps leaving. But then he comes back and they're together. Second degree type two. Again, we're looking at the relationship between the P waves and the QRS. The PRI interval in a second degree type two may be normal. It may be slightly longer than 0.20, but there's definitely a P wave before each QRS, and the PRI is fairly normal. But what happens is you'll have a P wave, QRS, P wave, no QRS, P wave, no QRS. There's a complete block there. You have a P wave and no QRS following it. When you're looking at the ratios on a second degree type two, start counting the P waves after the last QRS. After that last T wave, start counting the P waves. 1 P wave, 2 P wave, 3 P wave conduction, we would call that a 3 to 1 ratio. There were 3 P waves before a QRS complex. So that's a 3 to 1 ratio. If we had 2 P waves and then a QRS, well, that would be a 2 to 1 ratio. Remember to start to count the P's after the last T wave. Finally, she's had enough of him, she kicks his butt out. Third degree heart block, completely divorced. In this case, she's doing her thing, he's doing his thing, and there's no relationship there at all. Same as the third degree heart block. The atriums are firing off doing their thing, ventricles are firing off doing their thing, they are divorced. There is no relationship between the two. So when you look at the PR interval, there isn't one. There's no relationship between the P waves and the QRS. There's no set relationship there, no pattern to it. However, the P waves, since they're marching out independently and firing all by themselves, they will march out. If you take your caliper out and you look at your P waves, all your P waves will march out, nice and even. All of your QRSs will march out, nice and even. However, there's no relationship between the two. Both atrial and ventricular chambers are now not talking to each other and they're all firing independently all by themselves. All right, enough, turn around. You, turn around. You, put your hands on his shoulders. You, put your hands on his shoulders. Now start dancing. Dance. Start dancing, start dancing. You think I'm playing, start dancing. Look lovingly into her eyes. Whoa, creepy, 60% less. Keep dancing. And you're gonna keep dancing until I tell you to stop dancing, got it? Keep dancing. So now I have two people. They don't even want to be together. They're ignoring each other. Can I get them to work together? In fact, can I get them to dance together on a dance floor? You bet I can. How? I have a gun. <laughs> I can force them. I can get gangster and make them work together. Can I force the atrial chambers and the ventricular chambers to work together? You bet. I'm going to get gangster with that. I'm going to grab my Wackmaster 3000, set it to pacing, and provide transcutaneous pacing. Force those chambers to work together. Now, when looking at all blocks, what we really need to focus on is the ventricular response. That's what's really important. When we're pacing a third degree heart block, it's not because we want the atrial uh, chambers and ventricular chambers to work together. We want to get that rate up. We want to get that ventricular rate up. Remember, cardiac output, stroke volume times heart rate. 
In a third degree heart block, their heart rate may be 30, very low. We gotta get that ventricular rate up. And that's why we're pacing them. It's not so much to have the atrial chambers and ventricular chambers work together, it's to get that ventricular rate up. Get their heart rate up, get their blood pressure up. So if you have a patient, a third degree heart block, symptomatic, low blood pressure, transcutaneous pacing. Now, you may have a patient, you look at the monitor and you go, holy shit, they're in a third degree heart block, we gotta do something. Then you look at the patient and you go, how do you feel? Patient goes, fine, how are you? Well, no need to get crazy. We don't have to do anything right now. Just like you, I've had patients that were in a complete heart block that were asymptomatic and maintaining a blood pressure. Now, am I gonna put the pacer pads on them and be ready? You betcha. Am I gonna have two big IVs in and be prepared for things to go south? Oh, you betcha. But emergently, I don't have to do anything. Why? Because we don't treat rhythms. We treat patients that have rhythms. Heart blocks, heartache. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and thank you for watching today's video on heart blocks. Previously on the hot blocks. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. This is the best dance ever. By the way, yeah. <laughs>